Welcome back to Cigar Time. We're all here just for you. What's the show about? <laughs> no, we're just here for you. The the past 18, 19 months have gone by so fast. I hope you've enjoyed our program as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. Yes. We've all enjoyed this, right? Absolutely. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Even old Bally down there was having a good time. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> oh! The you know, don't have you know, this is the what one. you have to look forward to, Scott. What? Growing hair? No, looking like that. Today's show is brought to you by you General Cigar, so the makers of such iconic brands as Macanudo, Partagas, Cohiba, La Gloria Cubano, which we'll be talking about today, uh, Dunhill, Taranio, and, and Lucia. Punch. Oh. Hoyo de Monterey. Hoyo de Monterey and Punch. Excalibur. Almost forgot them. And Excalibur. Holy mackerel. Bolivar. Bolivar. They have a lot of friends. What? Hmm? <laughs> Just made it up. <laughs> oh. Oh, Lord. El Rey de Mondo. El Rey de Mondo. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. They, they make, make it. They, they don't make the cigar. They don't distribute they it, They make though. the cigar, They make though. the cigar. That is correct. So I don't want to hear it. That's okay. And the lovely Miss T will tell us all about our cigar for today. I see how you didn't say it, but that's okay, because I'm going to say it right. What? The name. He, did, he always says the name. He didn't say the name today. I said Lagario Cobano. Mm, that's okay. I'll say that's the name. That's a brand. That's a I'll model. say the name it of the cigar. A, by the way. I know. It's Cubana. Not, Not Cubano. Cubano. Oh, I always say Cubano. So, uh, Lagario Cubana, the artesano tabaqueros. Yes, Paul? Is that it right? Yes, you said it perfectly. The uh, wrapper is a Connecticut and Ecuadorian Sumatra. So the top is Ecuadorian Sumatra and the bottom is Connecticut. The binder is a secret because that's what it said. Because <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> and the filler is Dominican and Honduran. I love how you slipped the little I in there, but because he talks so much, I had time to really see that. So thanks, thanks. Way to go, ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> if he wouldn't have talked so much, I think I would have slipped and said it. But say what? Honduran. The sizes are Bellicoso, Churchill, Toro. What is this one? A Churchill? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a Churchill. And the taste profile is Churchill. coffee, pepper, leather, and earth. You know, one time, I love the tuxedo look, right? One time, I'd like somebody to get up and turn that around and show the folks at home our entire script. You would not believe this if you saw it. Oh, you should have had me do that last show. You could do it. You could wiggle yourself around and show, yeah, show them. Right Nobody, Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. They can see how Rob spelled that. I'd like to see it. Give yeah, me too. Mm. Wait, later, is this later. the Toro or the Bellicoso? Toro. I thought it was the Churchill. It looks like ah. Just because somebody told you that. That's Later in the program, we're going to have another interview with Michael Giannini, who was the major domo at La Gloria Cubana. Cubana, Cubana, Cubana. I said it right. I've been saying Cubana for 50 years. Ernie never corrected me. I always said it. Even in front of him, I said Cubana. Just polite. You say banana, you say banana. I mean, don't say banana. I say banana. Oh, okay. As long as you don't say banana. Banana. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll go away from that. I don't live in North Jersey. What are we doing today? We're, we're sitting around smoking and talking about cigars. Oh. That's a novel approach. You know, this isn't funny. gonna be a. Mm. Well, let's do it. What are you talking about? Hey, oh, just keep a camera on her at all times. How about those Phillies? How about this? Is this unbelievable or what? No. What's going on? Uh, Nothing. Look at how many games they've won. Boy, am I taking a chance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All five of them? Wait, wait, how many fingers do I have? Oh, no. my thumb and my index They have a lot finger? more than that. They have a lot more than that. <laughs> Matter of fact, my recommendation is order your series tickets early. Yeah, like wow. eight years early. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could actually talk about the subject at hand, which is the cigar. Oh, I love you oh, being no, here, Uncle no. Mark. I want to get about 15 or 20 cents more cents <laughs> more into it before I start this Okay. Question. Well, speaking of bananas, since somebody mentioned bananas, do you know that in Ecuador, oh my God, the tobacco fields are right adjacent. side by side yeah, adjacent with the banana plantations? And you know why, don't you? 
Why? No, uh, go ahead. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm interested to hear so they your reason. You're work? more the technocrat. You explain uh, uh, it. No, I'm not a technocrat. I want to hear your reason. <laughs> it's going to be good. Because they share the same common soil. Yes. They share the same common nutrient. They share the same common rainfall. Therefore, it imparts a sweeter taste into the tobacco. Wait a minute. That's Hold on. Good. Let me understand this. So two different plants in the same place share yeah. the same rainfall? Uh, yeah. Okay. I know it's hard for you to conceive that. I don't understand. How the, how, see, how, when the rain falls from the sky over five acres, it, it's, not, it's not like half the rain falls on the tobacco and the other half falls on the bananas. Okay. Okay, I got it. All right. And the nutrients that they spray on these or put on these fields, which we won't get into what the nutrients are. But yeah, they don't spray any nutrients. They, 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 they all share those nutrients. It can rain up the street and not rain down so the street. Oftentimes, the roots meld together which puts a nice sweet taste into the tobacco. Isn't that, isn't that? That sounds good. Is that <laughs> What's your story you're sticking to? I'm going to stick with that story. And Inter you have a different story. No, I don't. Interestingly, though, the banana plantations do not look the way you would expect. Oh, First of all, what I expect. Because they're green. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the uh, banana trees are... <laughs> that's actually kind of funny. The <laughs> banana trees are, are green. That's true. Um, they're way shorter than, yeah, than most people hanging. think. That's where the phrase, low-hanging fruit, comes from. Well, it, but the whole tree is short. They're about Rob's height. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here on my <laughs> own business. That whole thing was just to take a jab at Rob. No, no, actually, oh, just worked out that way. No, I'm you, still waiting to insert my famous phrase after what she did with the green bananas from the mouths of babes. Please don't. Uh, ah, no, totally seriously, uncalled no. For, uh, that was uncalled for, and I'm really sorry. Not very. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. I still think the green. Sorry. Now, now I know how it feels to lose control. So the so banana trees are short. You you expect. Banana trees to be like palm trees, to be big and tall, and bananas are up and there. Henry Belafonte underneath them. Henry? Harry. Harry, his brother. <laughs> Harry. <laughs> Come the, after Tally, uh, man. But the other thing Where that's strange, strange looking about <laughs> the banana plantations is you don't see any bananas. Because all of the clumps of bananas, or the hands of bananas as they call them, like are Andy. wrapped in bags. On the trees, so that bugs and and animals? and animals can't get to them. So what you see when you drive through a banana plantation are these little squat trees with bunches of bags hanging off of them. Don't you say the next come from. I know what's coming. <laughs> no, bag old trees. trees. <laughs> so in, say something bad about you. I know. In Ecuador, bags coming. grow on trees. That's all I have to say. Like money. That's cute. Well, and is speaking of which, for the last hundred years. The richest man in Ecuador has banana, been the guy who owned the banana plantations. Yeah. Oh, man. Mr. Uh, Noboa is his name. Rocky Balboa? I need a Noboa. Noboa? Oh. There's a joke in there somewhere, too, but I don't know what it is. And uh, time for our first impressions. Thank God. It's sweet. <laughs> it's sweet to me for some reason. Because mm -hmm. of the bananas. That must be it. No, I think it's the plantains. These are banana-grown cigars. Next. Next. Max? Oh, me. You don't, uh, you don't smoke the ring, by the way. Yeah, well, it's, about, it's about to taste like ring. That's true, but it hasn't gotten there yet. But yes, Give there are time. very heavy, sweet overtones to this cigar. Yeah, that's what I meant, overtones. Sweet overtones is what I meant. Um, With underlying <laughs> <herbs>. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still trying to God, I wasn't drinking. <laughs> <laughs> the word overtones connotes that there's some kind of undertone for That's the correct. overtone to be over. That's correct. The word and of the, the day under, is the over, the under, to be over and under on this. And is, the undertone uh, over is under. the earthiness that comes from the uh, Honduran uh, filler. I. Uh, is it my turn? I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I lost yeah. control. Of I, 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 I said this before when we weren't on camera, but I'm going to say it again. Uh -oh. I can't Careful escape... what you say. I can't escape the feeling that this cigar was made backwards. I think it would be better mm -hmm. if the part that you put in your mouth was the Connecticut and the part that you burned was the uh, Ecuador. Ecuador. Sumatra, you're right. Why? Uh, because the Connecticut is a little bit bland as it Always burns. 
but it ta I think it has a nice mouth taste. It prepares you for the stronger Ecuadorian taste. And and I think that burning the Ecuadorian kicks out lots and lots of flavor, and I think it would be better that way. A mild mouth taste and a strong burn taste, I think, would be better. So why don't you make one? I, hmm. have, I have my hands full with another project that will keep me occupied for the time. Which we won't tell you about now. We'll tell it's you about secret. later. And then you will discuss it at a future date. It's all a secret. He gives a cigar to everybody Which I in. was actually telling you anyway. He gives a cigar to everybody who walks in the door. Well, is that nice of me? I give, <laughs> I, I give it to you. I give it to you. I give it to you. So? It's not a secret. Me. That's what I'm saying. T. Hit anyway, him. now I forgot the word. I had a really big word in my head. You guys kept talking and it's gone. Good. A really big word. Big, was so the word was good? It was two <laughs> No, it was two <laughs> syllables. It was one or two syllables. <laughs> what was it? One, I think it's two. Two syllables. Okay, so. Really it's aesthetically, I got Whoa. it. Thank you. Aesthetically. From the aesthetic like four point. Syllables. Okay, yeah, aesthetics, that's three. Oh, so, <laughs> like he said, it would have been better. I think from the look, would have been better the Connecticut, and then the Ecuadorian Sumatra, which I'm not a really big fan of really either, so it's okay. Huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fan of what? what? At least a few of us. Yeah, right. yeah I think the cigar is fine the way it is. Congratulations. Yeah, I think it, I, I like the Ecuadorian part, bigger part, and the, the Connecticut smaller. Is that anything like Honduran? No, they could have they could have kept the Connecticut still small, but put it there and then more. They should have gone fifty fifty. It would have satisfied everybody. I think the cigar is fine the way it is. Uh, Scott, do we have a <laughs> Paul still stuck on my cue? Do we have a, have a month long promotion for General Cigar? You can tell us about. Yes, as a matter well, of fact, we still have some semblance of control here. We do all for the rest of the month, all of June. You buy any three general products, we will give you either a CAO Columbia or a La Gloria Esteli, which we reviewed last week, which oh. I'm sure everybody watching remembers. So it's three and one. He's already gone into the stores and bought them. Yeah, huh? Probably. And That's they true. Can come back and the do entire it month of they, June. They can do it as many times as they like. That's correct. Can they buy three and then do another three and another three in the same? Do as many purchase? threes as they want. Works for me. Many threes as they want. All right, now we're at the point of the program where we're very happy and pleased to have Michael Giannini from La Gloria Cabano, the major executive there. Oh, He's going to electrify us with some new news. New news. Take it away, Mike. Last episode, we were talking about the difference in blends in the different countries, the cigars and everything. We have no better expert than Michael here, so why don't you guys pick up where you left off? So the question was, what's my favorite tobacco? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, so uh, that's a really tough question to answer because, you know, it's basically the blends that we're working on. And what's neat is we have a great guy that travels around the world, Ernest. He's our tobacco buyer, and he's always bringing us new things. So, you know, I guess it's like how you eat every day. You may think, you know, I love lamb, and, you know, I'm going to eat lamb every day. And then, you know, you, f you figure out there's a new food, and that becomes your next favorite. Mm -hmm. And then the next one comes your next favorite. And so... I think the key is really putting these tobaccos together and trying to get the most out of them, and that's the taste profiles. And I think what we like to do is really change the experience that you guys have out there and ladies that is something unique you haven't tried before. And that's kind of the way to answer it, because you know, I love Nicaraguan tobacco, I love Dominican tobacco, and I love Honduran tobacco, but in isolation, each one of those brings something to the table that right. when you put them together brings a new experience. And when you add in another X factor of, you know, a unique tobacco that we find, um, that actually adds everything to those three tobaccos. And so that's kind of the unique thing about blending. And that's also the art of it because, you know, literally you can pull your hair out. You can work on blends for a year and, you know, you'll never figure out what's wrong with it. And that's when you got masters working with you. You know, sometimes just a half a leaf. You take a half a leaf out and it completely changes, changes the taste profile. Yep. You know, Paul, you know that, right? Yes, so yes, I do. you've been through that. And it's it, and that's the fun of this because, you know, if you knew, you know, you always have in the back of your head this taste profile you're always chasing. And then when it finally hits, it's great. But then the tobacco starts to change because it takes time for all these flavors to marry together. And then, you know, 45 days later, you're like, Dude, we weren't even close to this. What, what were we thinking, thinking right? Wow. You know, you, you that. I'm you know, amazed from year to year how consistent certain blends are. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's always that's been amazing. the amazing thing to me because 
as opposed to a country like Cuba, where all the cigars are made from basically Cuban tobacco. Yep. We blend, in this, in this country, we blend a lot of different countries' well, you know, tobacco we, together. We were talking about that on the show a couple of weeks ago, yeah. about the fact that you can't just make a blend. You have to make a blend, and then you have to have all of the alternates for all of the components, uh -huh. so that as things change or as crops change, you always have to be able to yeah. replace a component and keep the same flavor profile no matter what happens. I'm always amazed how they do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's two things. One is money. <laughs> and and the, the money actually, you know, what we do is we have four to eight years worth of tobacco on hand. Oh, always. Okay. So Coleman's were always known for Gotta always. be ahead. Gotta be ahead. Yeah. And so that's kind of what we do. You know, we kind of try to keep that inventory so we don't run out of problems. So if there's a disease issue with black shank or something like that, then there's another or hurricanes, God forbid. You know, the other part is doing a poro is much more difficult. That's all the components yeah. from one country. And, you know, that's probably even harder to do because you need to keep those tobaccos consistent over time. And that's why blending is a better option because you can get more taste out of a blend rather than poros. And I've worked on poros. I just launched something recently called Today's Poros, which is, you know, I wanted to task our factories, one from the Dominican poro, a Honduran poro, and a Nicaraguan poro. And mm -hmm. that was one of the toughest things we had to do wow. when we did them all in one box. So it was, it was a fun wow. project to work on. Wow. A real fun project. I have to bite my well, tongue when we talk about puros. I, well, I like puros, to be honest with you. And I think that's when I like Dominican the, the most. Well, not the most, but that's when I like Dominican when it's a puro. I found that out. When I, when I feel when they're blended, I don't really like it as much, like the Dominican flavor that I get from it. As a consumer and a smoker, you know, well, like an a employee here, when I go in the humidor, I already have what I want to smoke on my mind, like the flavors. So I go right to that one. And your uh, Lagoria Cubana Steli R is the yeah, one that I've always talked about always. and always said, and they hate when I say this, but I say cigars are like. I want, I want a cigar that's like foreplay, you know, like it starts <laughs> off kind of, you know, ease you in. She did say that, And right? then it spices she it up foreplay. a little bit, and then it eases you back down. And that is Stelly Art. Just, to me, it has all the right balance and components to be a Nic Nic Nicaraguan Puro, right? So. I'm going to steal that. Because <laughs> <laughs> you said it. Because if I had said that to you, I would be come off as not a... Yeah, well, it's it's not as yeah. bad of yeah. as when she. <laughs> when did they stop making or rolling the Lagorias in in Miami? Uh, about two years ago. Okay. Um, we just couldn't get the production out of there, right. and it just made sense. I mean, you know, there was an argument all over time that, oh, you know, I know. Did, right? You've lived this, Arthur. <laughs> Miami's were better than what I was made know. in Dominican. It's the oh. same recipe. Uh, you never argued with anybody no, about that. Not, no. I mean, it's when it's uh, the original flagship store. Right. And you do that, everybody thinks that's that, that's what was known. The El Credito Cigar Factory right. in La Havana. Yeah. Um, we moved the we moved the total operation to the Dominican. It was probably one of the smartest things we oh, have of course, done. Yeah. Wow. You know, for a couple of reasons. One is it's you know super expensive to roll cigars in the United States. We know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And you know, at the end at the end of the day, the, the costs were just creeping up so high that. We couldn't put it out. It was affordable to our to so our customers that's right. out there. That's, that's, that's important. And, you know, you got to make those business decisions, um, yeah. and it is what it is. It also proves how much of the experience of a cigar doesn't happen on your palate. It happens between your ears. So you can take the same tobacco and the same rollers and the oh, same yeah. everything, uh -huh. and if you tell them it's rolled in Miami or you tell them it's rolled in the DR, and in their mind. There's a difference. I remember and you back. Can't escape it. I remember back at a trade show, in, I guess the mid to medium '90s, talking to, to Ernie, and and saying to him, you know, my customers all want the Miami. They think the Miami is better than the Dominican. And he looked at me, and of course I knew the answer. He would look at me and said, tell them they don't know nothing. <laughs> and that's how he, you, you know how he talks. Absolutely. They don't know nothing. I said, I know it, but they don't know. It. Can you send me a letter well, that I can know. hang on the phone? <laughs> you don't know came, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but the, the funny thing, it's a, it's a great point you guys bring up. Um, you know, what's interesting is about when we're working on blends, you know, there's, there's basically five things you can taste. Sweet, sour, salt, bitter, and umami, which is meat flavors. And not everybody is able to taste all those things. So what's interesting to me is that when we're working on blends, we try to hit all five flavors, five oh. layers of flavor. We're running out of time. I hope you'll join us in a future show. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.
Thank you very much, Mike. That was Thanks, very, Mike. very, Thanks, very Mike. interesting. How's that? Interesting? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Everything Mike says is very interesting. Michael says is very interesting. He has a lot of notes. Fascinating every time. He's a local yokel. He is a local yokel. He's from the area. Yeah, he's here. He's from That's here. Paul, yeah. do you have something uh, you want to say? No. Okay. That was. Thank you. <laughs> I used that. myself up on the on the bananas. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, I was very educational. I very learned an awful lot. Yeah. I wasn't aware of all that. Thank God. Uh, Max, you want to tell us what this might match up to? Sure. I'd be more than happy to, Art. Thank the, you. The. Uh, my suggestions for this cigar is to is drink double, like have one drink with the Connecticut half. How come no one ever talks about it tequila? Mm, no, but I would, uh, I would very strongly suggest that this is, this can be paired very well with any of your aperitifs, uh, things like. Uh, Fra Angelica or Amaretto, uh, even something like the uh, Rum Chata would go very port? well with this. How about a 20 port? Rum Chata. A, tw a 20 port? Mm, perhaps I would go more with uh, um, something not quite so sweet. Okay. And yeah, I think the sweetness would really balance this off nicely. That's why they make all these things. What about a Tia Marie? Uh, not my cup of tea, but it certainly might work for some people. Mm, a sombrero. And uh, for your uh, beer drinkers, a good American lager would suit this just yeah. fine. Oh, yeah. Give an example. What's a good American lager? Yingling. Yes. It was easy. Nice. That's mm -hmm. good stuff. Yeah, it is good Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Is that a Heineken? No? That's, That's not American. American. What is it? Dutch. Is that German? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Dutch. 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 From Hollandia. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, Lohenbrauch came out. And I thought Lohenbrauch's Lohenbrauch. got to be German. Yeah, yeah, yeah. got to be German. I saw the can. It said, like, made in Milwaukee or something. I don't know well, originally it was German. Yeah, and it in the old important. days, back the when you were a kid. Yeah. That was way before my time. That's true. There was no Germany when he was a kid. That's true. There was Prussia. The Prussian Empire <laughs> back then. <laughs> Prussia's the border yeah. between Poland and Russia. Right? Yeah, yeah Prussia. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about shifting sands. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you, Uncle Max. That was uh, very educational. And Scintillating. Good. Thank you, Max. I, le I learned a lot from that, as I always learn from I'll you. I'll drink to that. And I've learned the difference between German and Dutch. And I hope our viewers, because we don't always have Uncle Max on, uh, but a lot of you had written in and said, <laughs> hey, we'd like, we'd like to know more about pairing. So if you want to see this become a regular segment, please let us know. Just, just send an email to our email address. Also, don't forget, in that email, because this is important, let me know how much you enjoy my hat, or in the rare case of some of you who don't like my hat, just remember, the ones who don't like my hat, we know where you live. That's not true. Enough. And we'll send you a free shirt. No. You get a 15% <laughs> off coupon. For yeah, if we get your email, you get a 15% coupon for your next visit. But don't forget, not only us, wherever you live, if you live near one of our 10 stores, certainly come on in and try us out or come back and whatever. But if you're not near one of our stores, please patronize your local brick and mortar store. Or if there's no parking over in Comar, come on down the street to Horsham. <laughs> come on down. Oh, if there's no parking. That was good. That was good. <laughs> she did say that. Yeah, did she did. She, she, did. she didn't put a specific name on it. Thanks. She said. Name the what? It's in Comar. <laughs> oh, she, I didn't know that. Well, I, I, that's, a, that's a city. That's not a store name. It's a Wait, city. That's a hold town. On a it's a post hold office. On a second. There are 96 parking spots in Comar. Yeah, let's be sure clear about parking spots. Yeah, they're, they're just behind the store. Don't get the that room. They're right shot. behind the store. Right, right behind, behind it, for God's sake. It. It's only a very it's short behind. walk. So if you're in Colmar and you think there's no parking at go our store, just store. go around the building. Right Is behind it? the building. See? 96 that spots. That's good. All right, I think it's time for a further review and put a number on this. Um, I'm enjoying this cigar. It, it's very special. I, they can't get away from the sweetness, and yeah. almost it com the sweetness in combination with I think it coats your whole palate. Almost reminds me, you guys are gonna laugh, but almost reminds me of honey. <laughs>
Well, I'm I not thought laughing. you were going to say metallic. Do you really? I get okay. it. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's very enjoyable. It's, it's sweet. sweet. Um, not as spicy as I remember it. Mm -hmm. I don't that's I don't like getting pepper or because it's leather. settled in. It's settled down. Yeah, I guess that's what you get from aging the cigar. Yeah, that's correct. But yeah, I would. It's sweet and very honeyish. Max, I, God forbid, tend to agree with Scott on this. That's scary. Yeah. Paul. Thank you, John. That was a very verbose uh, statement. Yeah. I, I gotta be honest. I don't like it. Thank you. Oh. I'm sorry. Where the hell did it come from? <laughs> I, what are we finding? I don't know. I mean, we're here to be honest. I don't like it. Rob? I respectfully disagree. I like the cigar a lot. I think it's really I good. I'm getting the sweetness, like Scott was saying. Uh, I like when it gets into the Sumatra better. The Ecuador have, Sumatra. I haven't better. gotten there yet. Yeah, I'm not uh, But it is very tasty. I get the leather. I get the earth. I don't get any of the pepper at all. I get hints of coffee when I... Uh, retro hail the cigar, but I think it's very good. It's extremely smooth, yes. and it's not as full body as I remembered. It's very like, that's what surprised yeah. me. Yeah, yeah I remember this being almost a barn smooth. burner. As for uh, me, I like hello. As for me, I get the honey, I get the sweetness. I get no respect. I get little. I get a little hint of pepper. It's a very good cigar. Did we get everybody now? No, you forgot about me. Oh, how could we forget about you? Okay. Normally, I would like a cigar that's not so peppery and everything. It's just, to me, it's too sweet. It's just too sweet. That's all I'm getting. I feel like it's a one-noter. Like a what? A one-note. Which is sweet. No. Which is... Is that a, yeah, A, B, C, D? But, I'm, but. I mean, but the ta but the, the Ecuadorian Sumatra, the taste in my mouth is, is nice, but I just, I'm not a big fan of Connecticut, really, so... Scott, you want to put a number on it? It's too sweet. Give it an eight seven five. Max? Seven and a half. Rob? No, I hate agreeing with Scott. God help me. <laughs> he is by letting you agree with me. <sighs> What's your number quickly? Eight seven five. I give it a solid eight and a half. Okay. I guess it's time to move on. <laughs> what are you it's cackling subjective. about? You didn't let me give it a number. And me neither. That was well, safe it's only for professionals. To I put thought you said eight seven five. I, I did not give it a number. He was going to give it a he said point five. Very aware. No, I would no, <laughs> never do that. I mean, it's very well constructed. It's okay. All right, ready, Paul, for our number together? Because no, you know what no. it is. I'm it's a six. I give it a six and a half. Ah, uh, uh, see, Taya, see, it wasn't a six. I was going to go six and a half, but no, uh, sure, were. Doesn't matter. They're both wrong. So no, we're not. Yes, you are. Where did we find you? Mate, mate, for you once. I smoked slow. Maybe it'll become a wonderful cigar when I get past that dividing line. Well, let's just cut okay, it. Okay, time to say goodbye. Let's move it along. Well, why smoke a bad cigar well, we really, to get to the good saying cigar? Are we saying goodbye? But yeah. life's too short to smoke cheap cigars. Max? Hi, Mom. Have another beautiful day in paradise, everybody. Oh. Smoke often, smoke happy. Tea? Bye-bye for now. Ciao for now, everybody. On behalf of our entire, uh, our entire <laughs> educated panel, yeah. and some of the ones who may not be quite as educated, we thank you very, very much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Thank Everybody you. agrees with me all the time. <laughs>